I'm Catherine Wright, Senior Lecturer in International Politics at Newcastle University, where my research examines the intersection of gender and security in international institutions. My monograph, co-authored with Matthew Hurley and Jesus Gio Ruiz, NATO Gender in the Military, Women Organising from Within, received an honourable mention in the PISA Susan Strange Book Prize. Hello, I'm Annika bergman Rosmond, and I'm Associate Professor in the Department of Political Science at Lund University um, in Sweden. And my research uh, tends to focus on gender and international relations, feminist security studies. I have recently published a select number of articles on feminist foreign policy, mostly in the Swedish context. Aside from that, I conduct a good deal of research on uh, celebrity humanitarianism and celebrity diplomacy. In this short video, we're going to introduce our article published in Review of International Studies. The paper interrogates the significance of Angelina Jolie's visit to NATO in early 2018 to discuss the issue of conflict-related sexual and gender-based violence. And we look at this in the context of the Alliance's strategic narratives and also what this tells us about broader engagement with the global women, peace and security agenda. Underpinning our article is a strong interest in the ways in which celebrities have increasingly come to take an active role in issues of security, conflict and peace often with an emphasis on gender-based violence and the humanitarian disasters emerging from the global refugee crisis. A lot of research has been done on celebrities and their involvement in humanitarianism and in diplomacy. And some of this work has recently sought to understand celebrities in their role in preventing conflict. With the work of Alexandra Budabin and Natalie Hudson, amongst others, investigating celebrity active contributions to ending conflict in Africa. And in my own scholarship, I have also explored the ways in which American celebrities took issue with the American intervention in Iraq. So with emphasis on anti-war activism, that scholarship has said less about the ways in which celebrities have sought a more active role within formal security institutions. And in this paper, we zoom in on Angelina Jolie's visit to NATO and what it can tell us about celebrities as um, security actors. Relevant to our analysis is Laura Russell, Alison Miskinon, and Ben O'Loughlin's identification of three types of strategic narratives. So system narratives concerning the nature of the international system, issue narratives, but also identity narratives. Issue narratives are strategic in the sense that they seek to shape the terrain on which discussions of policy take place, and identity narratives, or as we call them in the paper, self-narratives, concern the identity of international actors and are constantly kind of renegotiated, but also contested. So we look at women, peace and security as an issue narrative. Here, NATO has sought to convince their publics that ending sexual violence and gender-based violence in conflict is possible it very much represents it as a problem for kind of non-NATO, non-Western states, reinforcing the masculinist Western protection logic which prevails in global politics. So it's important, therefore, for our analysis and our contribution to strategic narratives to interrogate the co-constitution of the projection, but also the reception of identity and issue narratives. We also look at NATO's self-narrative or its identity narrative, and this has sought to ground the alliance with the values of democracy laid out in its foundational treaty, rather than its militarist purpose. And within this self-narrative, there is an increasing focus on women, peace and security matters. So Jolie's visit is important to examine, 
because it adds visibility to this. And as Annika says, kind of engagement with a new type of audience, lending credibility to NATO's role in an issue area that it had not engaged with so publicly before. And the site of reception and the role of visual representation is something which has been overlooked to a certain extent within the study of strategic narratives. And there's a couple of notable exceptions. So Reese Crilly and of course, kind of Louise Piers. However, in focusing on the narrative NATO seeks to project in our paper and the media coverage of the visit, we show how visual representations become really important and integral in wider celebrity and pop culture to shaping strategic narratives in and of the self. In this case, through foregrounding celebrity and star power. Another aspect of our article pertains to NATO's efforts to raise awareness of conflict-related sexual and gender-based violence. And in so doing, calling upon celebrity and using celebrity and popular culture often communicated through visual representations um, to wide mass audiences and seeking, if you like, to reach audiences that would not otherwise take an interest in NATO, but might indeed be very interested in the whereabouts of Angelina Jolie. And here Angelina Jolie's access to mass audiences can also benefit NATO in its quest for being recognised for its role in the context of uh, WPS. And effectively on its website and in many other fora, visually representing and using Angelina Jolie through visual representation. The quest for leadership prevails in contemporary efforts to tell the story of NATO as a gender just military alliance. And this is something we identify in the paper. However, the articulation of the specific theme rest on an assumption that sexual violence in conflict is solely a tactic of war and neglects the potential of NATO troops to be perpetrators rather than just reporters of sexual violence. And the other thing that's interesting here, which speaks to NATO's widest women, peace and security work, is that this bilateral partnership with Jo Lee and her previous conflict related sexual and gender based violence advocacy and her role at the UN adds legitimacy to this quest by NATO for what it defines as military leadership for women, peace and security. And this partnership element also echoes NATO's kind of broader engagement with women, peace and security, which has been carried out through partnership with a myriad of different external actors, including partner states, but also civil society which I've touched upon in previous work. So uh, this points to NATO's efforts to be seen as an international actor engaged in awareness raising when it comes to conflict-related sexual gender-based violence. And in so doing, NATO rather productively made use of Angelina Jolie's visit with Angelina Jolie um, having a good deal of experience in seeking to eradicate sexual and gender-based violence, for example, in collaboration with Britain's former Foreign Secretary, uh, William Hague. She brings a certain glamour, she brings a, a certain legitimacy, and she brings mass audience. That legitimacy um, then is grounded in assumed knowledge of the uh, of the issue at hand. Sort it's of located or it draws upon her um, her celebrity status. It draws upon her location within the United Nations. All those things were sought by NATO in order to legitimize its own role as a defender of women's rights, as an actor committed to using national militaries and the alliance to promote gender justice, and 
as a way of um, seeking uh, a role and carving out a role for itself with the global politics more broadly. Uh, in so doing, NATO often and effectively made use of photographs, images and visuals showing Angelina Jolie during her visit, displaying those on its uh, website, adding both glamour and uh, visibility to its quest for legitimacy. Uh, Catherine and I both had the opportunity to visit NATO in 2019, participating in the NATO Committee on Gender Perspectives. And on this occasion, Secretary General Stoltenberg pointed to the significance of Jolie's visit to NATO in legitimizing NATO as a dedicated and serious actor in the fight against sexual violence in, in conflict, uh, as well as the wider women, peace and security agenda, which we indeed thought was of particular interest to our article. If you'd like to delve deeper into the significance of Angelina Jolie's visit to NATO, both for NATO's strategic narratives, but also from a women, peace and security perspective, then our article is available now, open access, thanks to Newcastle University and Review of International Studies. And our next steps to build on this research here will be very much to interrogate recent calls for NATO to adopt a feminist foreign policy. So do keep an eye out for more from this fabulous feminist duo.